Hey guys, Ed Budd here, and today I've got my top speed shoes of 2020. Hey cool cats and winter watchers, Ed Budd here with a Christmas cracker of an episode today. I'm going to be putting the pedal to the metal, burning some dust, and proclaim it's turbo time as I'm going to recap on the best tempo and speed running shoes of 2020. So all of the shoes today are either my own purchases or non-dictated review freebies. My own honest opinions of course because that's all I've got. Okay let's accelerate forward with the first shoe, the endorphin speed. Bet you didn't see that one come in. So got to get the obvious one out the way. Everybody's had this in their top fives or top tens or top threes or Whatever. First we have the Sockany answer to Nils Lofgren, the ultimate side man. A nylon plate in its midsole belly. And it really roars into action when asked, like a sports coupe on a country road. I think it's got way more under the hood than it first appears, and it really enjoys being pushed harder this one. I think the less rigid speed roll technology in this endorphin will urge your mouth to smile. And your wallet not to groan too much. Certainly a slightly more pocketbook friendly price on this one. I found the upper to be as assured as Mrs. Edbud's patience with my running shoe arsenal. I think the Speed is in fact one of the ultimate speed shoes. Great for tempo, intervals or threshold pace work. So versatile I don't really think it fits into any specific pigeonhole. It's just a really great all-rounder but if you're wanting to put in some top level performances then this is the one for you. Hmm, what's next? The Reebok Run Fast 2, or the Float Ride Run Fast 2, as it's actually called Silly Ed Bud. So, if running fast is your bag, top pace practice your aim, and successful speed sessions your goal, then check out this 90s throwback. I'm not talking about me, by the way. I'm much more vintage than that. This is certainly the Mark Lamar of running shoes. I think it may look a little bit vintage, but it's more a fine wine. Pebax material here in the midsole. It's going to pleasure those aching pads. And tempo efforts are tantalizingly tempting to perform in this super value option. I mean, pick these up very often for around about 65 Earth credits. That's not a lot. You can't get a lot for that many Earth credits these days. So not so torturing on the wallet, this one. It's not going to leave you penny pinching too much. Don't want to be doing that around Christmas. And I think it has a bit of a psychological effect on your mind that you're not too worried about using it on a more daily basis. No carbon plate faffery here. Nice at all speeds, but push up the pace for a smile on your face. You want tempo? Then buy a shoe with the word in the name. The Hyperion Tempo. The Hyperion Tempo grew on me over time. Like a song, perhaps on the initial hearing that doesn't really strike a chord, but after repeated listens, can never be forgotten. A bit like Holiday Road by Lindsay Buckingham. The tempo though hits the high notes with a sublime and very light airy upper. It hugs your foot like your best friend before the March lockdown. And of course you've got that DNA flash midsole which is bluer than Luke Skywalker's favourite beverage. Firm but propulsive. It's engaging, a little bit like a trip to Vegas. You'll be married to the tempo once it bewitches you with its ultralight feel and high speed chops. I think this one's a bit more of a long term investment though, certainly more expensive than the Reebok Run Fast 2, but I don't think you'll feel too much buyer's remorse once you've had a few training dates with the Hyperion Tempo. Similar underfoot feel to the Hyperion Elite 2, but few will want to stretch to that skyscraper cost of the Yellow Peril. Tremendous tempo. Higher paced Nike's next, the Flyknit favourite. Weighs in actually is the heaviest shoe on today's list. 308 grams this one. It does fly in with a few extra G's, but you won't feel tempted to run any slug speed miles in this nylon plated pace clog. More Zoom X and React than you can shake a stick at with some considerable rubber traction areas. They'll certainly grip the ground on your running route. There's some quite big lugs there and they're holding up well over time. Exciting, enjoyable and certainly a shoe for higher paced efforts only. It's a shoe that some people love and some people not so much. I'm a big fan of the Tempo Next Percent, always have been, right from the top. I adore those AirPods and their perfect position. 
perhaps it's down to my deeper and more lengthy experience in the Alpha Fly Next Percent. I mean, I've had that shoe from March this year. Can't get enough of this one, and I'm quickly amassing more and more miles every week. A little higher on the price scale, this one, and that's going to put off some people who are sat on the fence. But if you are sat in that exact position, I urge you to leap off and give them a try. Only if you like Marmite, though. A list such as this wouldn't be complete without a notable mention. And that is today, the Hoka One One Rocket X. Now, I really love this shoe. Just one big problem, as you probably would have seen in my long run video last week. Just that rubbing issue. I still haven't managed to get rid of it as of yet. I'm going to keep trying, though, and keep persisting with this one. It is a nicely propulsive shoe. I think I can get some more out of it. I want to get up to 100 at least so I can give you my longer term review. So those are my top speed options for 2020. What do you make of them, ladies and gentle spoons? What are your top speed options this year? The ones you pull out for those pace efforts, all the threshold stuff. Let me know down in the comments. Time for a quick musical interlude. Recently, again, I've been listening to the band Low Roar. I first encountered them when playing the game Death Stranding on my PS4 Pro last year. Hideo Kojima, the designer of the game, had decided to include some of this group's music into the game, and it really does create an amazing atmosphere as you go through the story missions. Most people may have heard I'll Keep Coming, which is one of the chief tracks that's used throughout the game. I don't know what it is. The wintertime reminds me of this band more and more. I think perhaps it's the feel, the icy, cold kind of feel of the songs. I know that the singer did move to Reykjavik in Iceland and has been there and made lots of the music in that particular place, so maybe that's had something to do with it. I really love Don't Be So Serious as well. It's just such a beautiful track. Very careful choice of instrumentation and different tones and layers. Probably great music for long runs, actually. I urge you to check out Low Roar. Okay, that's just about all for me for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. It does help the channel out a huge amount as well. I can't stress that enough. If you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you. Hey guys, a little bonus piece at the end today. There are a couple of shoes that have come into the shoe sanctuary ready for review. One of those is the Reebok Symmetros. Finally picked this one up on a crazy deal. I think it was about £60 or something in the end, which I think for that price it's worth giving it a try. Certainly quite a bit more of that float ride foam in the heel area there. Certainly a few nods to stability there in the heel. Although it's quite cushioned and plush back there. A plusher kind of tongue as well. So interesting to see how this one shapes up. And the one that everyone's waiting for. The SL20.2. It's stupendously bright, isn't it? Have weighed it though, it does come in a little bit heavier than the SL20. I'm really not sure about these strange lace loops at the front here. We shall see. Initial run coming in this one very soon.